How are you feeling? You doing okay today? Good. Yeah, good. I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little tired. Can you believe last night? My neighbor's banging on my door. Three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. It's a good thing I was already up playing my bagpipes. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm kind of tired. Yeah. Hey, welcome. Ooh, we got a cold one today. Beautiful day. Don't let the sunshine fool you. Uh, season three, episode eight on this February the 24th. 2 ot 22 This is Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. That would be me. We are powered by WeStream. That's Kevin behind the camera. We'll talk to him in a bit. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars. Always a pleasure to have them with us on the program. Performance Heating and Air, Carlo and the gang. Boy, we could use some heating out here right now. Also, Virgin Insurance. Uh, Mark Shirk and Blake and the gang, thank you very much. We are headed into the bodacious, sun-drenched window where it's much warmer inside at Fiddler's Poor House. They are our hosts every week and we thank them for that. We have Welland filmmaker Natalie B. Bo coming on the program today. Brand new film, brand new documentary coming out uh, this uh, Friday, tomorrow night, as a matter of fact, on the CBC. She's going to be joining us this afternoon and uh, some other interesting things that have been going on over the last little while. And we'll go, uh, uh, yeah, I know the Ukraine thing. Yeah. Good luck, everybody, with that. Anyway, we're going to be back uh, with Season 3, Episode 8 of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Starry in just about 30 seconds. Hope you can stick around. Okay, here we are, ready to go. Oh, it's a little bit warmer here, basking in the sunshine. I was saying to Kevin earlier, maybe, just maybe, uh, we could open this uh, lovely window today. I'm not thinking so. It is one chilly Thursday afternoon. Uh, welcome to Season 3, Episode 8. And that is one massive explosion you see there, Kevin. I can only guess that that is a picture of something that's happening in Ukraine today. Yeah, I think that's uh, Kiev. Yeah, or Kiev, as we are now supposed to call it. And uh, these are images that a lot of us are waking up this morning, and you yeah. mentioned it, you know? Um, and again, there isn't anything that we can say except to the Ukrainian community in uh, Niagara. Uh, we're sure that you have probably some friends or relatives uh, over there and uh, it must be a little bit tense for you so hopefully cooler heads will eventually prevail yeah Lee also wanted to share some um, some video this morning because you know the the world is interconnected now and um, <laughs> are we ever and here's some of the stuff that uh, that again that we're waking up to in in Niagara images and videos coming out of uh, the Ukraine yeah they were invaded by Russia, as, as the headline said, by land, sea, and air today, all at the same time. Russian airplane is trying to attack. If you're familiar with the geography. I mean, is this even, is this even really? I can only think it has to be real. It's live. Look at the shells! Look at the shells flying up. Those are those are empty shell casings that are flying up, and they're shooting at what? We Jesus. don't know. Look, I've never seen anything like this. Mortars and shelling and aircraft and ships in the Baltic or the Black Sea, I should say, not the ba the the Black Sea. Which is the is the water border of Ukraine and where Crimea is. It was the last area of contention between Russia and Ukraine when they invaded Crimea. I mean, I hate I hate to say it, Lee, but this 
This almost looks like a video game. For people of my generation. I know. It's no game, though. Like, is this... I have to ask again, is this legit? I mean, 37,000 people are watching it, so... What's, what, what's your source? What, scroll down a little bit. What is the source? Abonari. Uh, Abonari, whatever. MiG-29 versus C-RAM. So a MiG-29 is an aircraft. And those are tracer bullets that you see going up there. Tracers, of course, helping you continuing uh, to gauge the direction of your fire. Jesus. Wow. Where is that going to land? This is... This is scary stuff. I, I just honestly don't... It's got to be real, but... Why are we getting... Like, I don't want to say who's holding that camera, but... Oh, believe me. Why are we getting these images? Believe me, there have been all kinds of... People setting up, and they've had all kinds of time to set up camera crews and trucks and all kinds of things to make this a video event. Make no mistake. Jeez. They've been talking about invading uh, Ukraine for weeks now. More than weeks. Months, probably. This plane has destroyed the BTR from Russian air base and trying to attack right now. As you can see. It's mesmerizing. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> no, certainly not as clear and you're, oh, look. Looks like they got that one. So is that a tank? Is that a tank just at the water's edge? Kevin, I don't know. I don't know the modern military equipment. I, 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 we can only guess what the actual equipment is. I mean, these, these, these guns fire uh, like kind of ballistic missiles and sorts of things. Jesus. Look! This is happening now, apparently. Right now. Look, look at that. That poor bugger in that plane's going down. I, I'm sorry, I have to assume that this is real, but I, I mean, if we find out it's not, I, I apologize. Just, this is what the internet well, what is. A, what, a, what else could it be? How did you source this site? Search for Ukraine. I literally just searched for Ukraine. And it says live. I'm not sure who this lady is. Excuse me. I mean, that looks like a tank right there. And that's what's doing all the shooting. Oh, but it's not a tank tank. These, these, there, there's multiple, multiple rockets see. going. What they say? All right. The way it's moving, is this maybe a drone shooting all this? It's coming I'm not back sure where my sneezes are coming from. Jesus. Yeah, that looked, that did look like a drone. What the hell is this? That's a laser of some sort. Oh my god. This is high tech in the moment. And yeah, we'll warfare. This is this is not your father's or grandfather's war. I'll tell you that. Holy crap! The hell is that? that? Is it following that aircraft? These are these have to be all tracer-style bullets trying to hit this plane, and it evaded them. I, I don't want to say they're not doing a good job, but. You know, who knows what the other side's equipped with, look right? At all the, look at all the faces and thumbs up and all those things uh, going onto the site from the, from the right-hand side of the screen. This is crazy. We, I, I expected to spend about 10 seconds, I know we're, we're a Niagara program, but look how mesmerizing it is. They're trying to get that plane. I somebody's saying here, fake. So I don't know. Are they? But is, is that fake? For 40,000 people watching it. Yeah, somebody says this is a game. Oh, so really? I don't know. Well, if it is, then let's get off it because I don't want to. And again, that's what I was worried about, that this, 
wasn't actually happening for real. That doesn't. But forty thousand people are watching. And this can is, that really this be the, happening in the Ukraine right now? Problem with fake news, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Great specs. It's a. It's what? But I don't know. Here I'm reading some of the comments here, Lee. Okay. And it's uh, it's tough to discern. Like, cause we don't we don't want to bring. Like, you see, fake this guy news, says right? just a game. It's Arma Three. All right. The machine running this game is really strong. Ukraine's Armalite is high tech. It can hit the aircraft of Russia, even if it's flying high and high. So that one says it's real. There's probably not a war that. But forty thousand people watching somebody posing to play a game. It, like I said, it did look a little too. Pat, a, a slick, a little, yeah, too, a little slick. too slick. And the photography and everything way too clear. Yeah, I mean, here's here's actually some of the images, but the timeline was right too because it would be dark there right now. Ooh, it's the Sorry about that. Yeah. All right, so we're not purporting to say that that was definitely authentic military action. Oh, God, that breaks your heart. Josh Benson, the Ukrainian father, says goodbye to his family as he sends them to a safe zone and prepares to stay back in the fight. Via, oh I can't read what that says. Hashtag Russian Via Ukraine. Straight out of the six TV. That's heartbreaking, Lee. That's that's about <laughs> the age of my daughter. Yeah, and you're sending your kids away, and you're staying. But all right. I didn't think your general rank and file family like that would be called into fight. I mean, the Ukraine has the, uh, not the Ukraine. Sorry, Ukraine. Has its, has its army. It has its troops. It has. A, I mean, it's not all men from all families called to arms kind of thing. It's not guerrilla warfare. It's 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 the real deal. With armies and things, why would a father like that have to say goodbye to his family? Just um, well, unless he's a soldier. Then of course all bets are off. Okay. Again, as, uh, as any of this stuff goes on, you don't need us on a Niagara show necessarily to talk about international matters, but it is, it is on uh, many, many people's minds and tongues today. We're a melting pot of cultures here in Niagara, and one of those cultures is indeed Ukrainian, and we, uh, we feel for people that have people and relatives, friends, etc., that are in harm's way right now. So, and, the internet and, one, and, and, and again, to go to Kevin's point, we will continue to ferret out, hopefully, the wheat from the chaff, as they say, the real from the fake. Because you know there's, there, there are people sitting around at their computers right now put, putting up those war game things just for giggles, you know. It's crazy, though, to get 40,000 people watching something that's fake. And yeah. I apologize, but, I mean, even right away we thought, hmm, this... Looks a little too sensational. Yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit more gullible than you. you. You know more about that stuff. And But when you said that, it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe it's a little bit too slick. It did look a little too slick, but I yeah. don't know what modern warfare looks like, to be honest. It might look like that. Um, the other thing that is imminent, well, the other thing, one of the many things that is uh, top of mind today in particular is it's Pink Shirt Day. Pink Shirt Day is the day that, uh, and you know what? I searched for one today, and I don't. Lee, I think it was yesterday. Oh, was, I apologize. Yeah, I think Pink Shirt Day was, was yesterday. Was Pink Shirt Day? Are you sure? Yeah, because uh, well, we'll put up Nick put up a post here, so let's uh, let's oh, take I a look. Oh, I apologize. I thought it was today. Because I was gonna, I was looking for a pink shirt to wear today, and I didn't have one that wouldn't be too cool in the office. <laughs> didn't have one. Well, here uh, we go. I might have got my dates mixed up. There we go. I think it was yesterday. Oh, it, was a, it says one day ago. Yeah, my apologies for being uh, calendar challenged. But yeah. nevertheless, Pink Shirt Day was yesterday. And it's to recognize the fact that uh, bullying happens in our schools and in other ways with our children. And it has gained popularity, that meaning Pink Shirt Day, and the fight against bullying because of the impact that social media can have. It's not like... 
uh, in my day, we all were bullied. We all were bullies probably at one time or another, to be perfectly honest, and didn't realize that we were being bullies at the time. But uh, we've, all of us, I think, have rethought, oh my gosh, when I was in school, did I, I guess when I said that to so-and-so, I guess that could have been bullying. And uh, I myself, even though I was a fairly big kid, I was, I was bullied psychologically as well in the school. And you just, we, we put up with it just because, well, that's, that's what you did every day uh, until you put a stop to it. Uh, I put a stop to what happened to me um, when I just beat the crap out of this kid because I had had enough. And I wasn't a fighter, I was a lover. <laughs> but uh, but that, that's how I had to end it. And, but we can't do that today. And the sad thing, two sad things about, about this, and then I'll move on. It's a positive thing, don't, don't get me wrong. Pink Shirt Day is a positive thing because it, it provides a, a vehicle for parents and teachers to talk to children about being uh, kinder to each other and understanding that everybody's different and all of those all of those positive messages it's a it's a it's a great thing one of the things that happened on this particular post though that bothered me is it was hijacked by some people that made comments on Niagara 411 that turned it into something else like this one and sorry Bob for outing you but you put it out there pal except for the Canadian government kindness equals emergency act kindness scares the hell out of them what place does a comment like that have on a post about Pink Shirt Day and anti-bullying of children in schools, etc. What place does this conversation have? And that conversation went on to talk about government, etc. It's like, wow, um, like, why hijack something like that? Um, and these are the these are the things that make me feel badly for our society that. And Nick puts a post up like that, kindness is one size fits all, and a, and, and a few hijackers uh, make it into an anti-government slogan uh, and campaign. I, just take your opinions, which you're fully entitled to, and put them on somewhere that's appropriate. That post wasn't appropriate for that. Please, just please, try to focus on 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 something other than your own prejudices once in a while because it makes the rest of us depressed <laughs> I have enough things to depress me with, with. Uh, it happens all too often like that was uh. not that was not a political post that was not the place for that you could put up almost anything nowadays and somehow somebody will call you a true dope yeah that's not the place for that like pink shirt day pink shirt day really and it turns into an anti-government a slogan or I don't know um, so oh by the way let's do this right now Kevin let's uh, lighten the load a little bit here we have a great guest coming on today that I mentioned when we were uh, coming in for the office uh, well and film producer Natalie Bebo is going to be joining us once again she of course has become quite quite uh, famous in her realm uh, of film and uh, as I mentioned, she's from Welland. The first film she made that gained incredible notoriety was The Wal Walrus and the Whisperer, which of course was about uh, marine land. And the second one that was a derivative of that, sort of a, an offshoot uh, of that also, kind of on the same topic, was The Last Walrus, which has been nominated for two Canadian Screen Awards. Uh, for which we congratulate Natalie, but she has a new film coming out and it's going to be debuting on uh, the CBC Friday night, I think it's at 9 o'clock on The Nature of Things, which is the uh, David Suzuki uh, show and it's called Why We Dance, it's a real departure from those intense uh, very emotional uh, shows about marine land it's a different kind of homecoming as they say this time, well and filmmaker dives into dancing for a new documentary. And uh, Kevin, we've a we have a trailer for this, do we not? Yeah, yeah, let's get to that. Okay. Why do humans dance? Dancing is the human form seen through the lens of culture. It's life expressing itself. Dance is not exclusively human. But 
The way we ritualize it does appear to be unique. Dancing can have a very healing quality. When people move together to music, they feel connected. And dance helps us bond. Any movement can become a dance. Movement is the medium of evolution. It is a way of getting in touch with something bigger than myself. A human self is constantly creating and becoming patterns of movement. Dancing helped humans become human. Hmm. Culture as well as uh, self-expression uh, in the world of dance. Why We Dance, uh, the new film being released new on, uh, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm really looking tomorrow forward night. to it. I love yeah. documentaries. Like I'm a documentary junkie. And when yeah, I saw that too. coming out, I thought, what a great question. Why, why do we dance? Yeah. And so, why do we all, we all dance so differently and all different uh, influences? Why do, we, why do we do that? Um, a lot of it started out years ago, I'm sure, as ceremonial. And we'll ask Natalie that question and others. Now, unfortunately, as you can appreciate with, with the release of this coming tomorrow evening, her schedule is uh, like up to the nines with interviews and meetings and stuff that, uh, because a lot of people want to talk to her. She's, uh, She's very, very famous in, uh, in her world, and uh, therefore our world, and she's really super duper busy <laughs> today, so she's not going to be able to join us until about 20 after 1. Hopefully if she checks in a couple minutes early, we'll squeeze, squeeze those two minutes out of, the, out of the conversation as well. But anyway, she's coming up to join us between 1 and 1.30 at some point uh, here on the show, so uh, we look forward to that. As we always look forward to uh, working with our title sponsor, Gail's Gas Bars, that fuels this program every single week. And here we are into season three already. Episode eight of season three. Kevin, this year is flying by. Uh, and, you know, as they say, you get older, time goes faster. I've never quite understood it, but it seems to do that. Uh, performance, heating, and air also. Thank you, uh, Carlo, to, for uh, hanging into the Hanging into the show here uh, with us for uh, our third season, as well as Verge Insurance Group for all of your insurance needs, home, car, uh, contents, whatever. Um, those, are, uh, those are the people to go to here in Niagara. All of these Niagara companies supporting Niagara, for Niagara, et cetera. So, like we are, and uh, while we're going there, let me remind you that this is a program that is entirely open to you. Uh, over the last few weeks, of uh, the rather interesting Freedom Convoy protests that have been going on. We received uh, a, a lot of feedback uh, as uh, to the fact that we were, uh, we were biased or one-sided, et cetera. And, you know, it's, it's, it's I got to throw this back at you, uh, for those people that think that, not everybody that's watching the program, uh, but for the people that believe that we have some sort of political agenda or corporate agenda, etc. First of all, there is no corporation. Uh, it's Kevin and me. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's it. Those, are the, those, are the other, those are the only people we're ang uh, we answer to. Uh, yes, our sponsors, of course. We want to make sure that we're, we're uh, family driven and uh, not too nuts, but our sponsors have already and always uh, supported us, whether they personally agree with us or not. Uh, they sponsor the show and they have no idea what our content is every day. We don't run our content by our sponsors, so if we do something that really pisses you off, don't blame them. Blame us. <laughs> uh, and uh, no, But the, uh, the point is made that uh, you say, you know, the show's open. Yeah. So, so if there's anything you want to come on the show about, if you want to promote something, if you've got a point of contention, if you want to talk about new media, old media, you want to talk about COVID, whatever it is, the link is right there. It's the Zoom link. Just click on that, and we'll get you on the show. And you need not agree with anything that we say. Of course, Kevin and I are going to have opinions on things. We're not like talking head robots that have to play this milk toast uh, uh, middle of the road thing. We're going to have opinions on topics. They don't have to agree with yours, and yours don't have to agree with ours. Uh, 
And that's where debate comes from. One of my big criticisms of uh, the social media zealots these days uh, is the fact that they only talk to people or visit sites or read literature, if they can read anything at all, is, is stuff they agree with. And that is, no, that is no way to learn. That is no way to widen experience, is to continue to talk to people that share your views only. You have to, you have to debate. It may not change your mind. It may not change my mind, but at least some intelligent, some calm and fair uh, discussion about things. And because uh, Kevin and I have done it talking to each other, uh, I never really thought of it that way before. Thanks for bringing that up. All you have to do is uh, click on that link at the bottom, the click the, the Zoom link in the post that you see there, and uh, and poof, Kevin will uh, make sure that uh, you're technically connected, uh, et cetera, and then we'll have a conversation about whatever you like. And uh, to that end, Lee, uh, Gary Wilkins has joined the program. It's just that easy. Period, yeah, Gary, uh, good to see you today. How goes the battle? Good, Lee, how are you? I'm great, what's going on? Not much. I just wanted to uh, inform your uh, viewers. Yeah. Like Kevin was saying last week on last last Thursday's show, that it is as easy just to get on and ex express your opinions. Don't hide behind the keyboard. Don't spew your hate. Just get on the show, <laughs> and it's just that easy. And it's just that easy. That's Have all you? I really wanted to say, Lee. Okay, uh, have you got any update? I know you were on uh, um, a couple weeks, weeks ago, ago. with yes, you and you and Brian. Have you had any feedback on, uh, or has there been any forward motion on uh, well, any of the areas that you're concerned about? Yeah, we we've been uh, actually we've been in, in conversation with the realtor from Vaughn. Um, she's in disbelief that she was lied to by the city and, and i don't mean to bash the city again i don't want to get cut up but uh <laughs> she was she, she's 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 bewildered that she's selling homes well they're all they're all sold actually she's telling us and uh it's quite disheartening that we 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 put literally 25 years into this uh this campaign to, never to build on this land and that's and that's the uh, now just to just to clarify that's the cyanamid site former cyanamid yes, site sir. Well, well the old YMCA site this the is old the YMCA site, that you, site. yeah okay. you you had mentioned last last week or two weeks ago I'm sorry that uh, like I have firsthand knowledge like back in 1983 I started there you know yeah. and my me and my father we we my father was a conductor for the the engine for the, the the rail cars and i would decontaminate the sort of decontaminate the rail cars of yeah. cyan, cyanide so and i know where we we poured all that stuff and so it's like, again though we're back to that we're back to that same old uh between a rock and a hard place situation absolutely uh, in the fact that you have this th this knowledge and history and uh then the the ministry of the environment has green oh, lighted, yeah, ha, you know, has green lighted this thing for development. So you've got you got a council and you got builders and you got real estate people, etc., all involved in this. That if uh, we're kind of like treading treading water, what do we well, what do we believe? How do we do this? That we, 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 we had made a package together. Uh, I yeah. think it was like four four or five envelopes, big envelopes, thick of uh, so much information. And I do believe Mike is uh, going to going to uh, forward Kevin this information. Okay. But we had given Kelly from the Ministry of Environment, we went actually went right to her office on St. Paul Street, right. and she was asking us, well, where did you get this map? Like, if you don't know about all this stuff, being from the Ministry of Environment, and you don't have this stuff, like, how do how do residents, like Mike, Mike, Mike and myself, yeah. how, how do we, like, we got this stuff from the Gardner and Lee report. Like it's, like it's public knowledge, and why doesn't she have that? Well, like that's we a have, good. Uh, 
That and others are pretty darn good questions, and uh, we'll we'll keep asking them. Uh, let uh, me Gary. let me throw in, and, a, a, and we'll keep telling. Let me throw in a softball question here. That picture over your shoulder. What's that? Hanging on the wall. That's my father. Was it? I was wondering. Well, yes, God bless sir. your father. Uh, yeah, he's, and, uh, uh, and and just to, he's the to, one that motivates me because he died of the salmon plant. Oh, okay. Oh, God. So um, like he died. He died of lung cancer. He died of colon cancer. He died of a lot of cancerous problems. And this is why I fight this. You know, like every day. Like we're, we're, I can. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say that we're we're just blowing crap out of our mouths. But you know, when Mike came on last two weeks ago and he said he's got three three people that died of his in his, in his family of, of cancer from that property. I have a father behind me that died of cancer from that property. And this is the same man that used to drive the rail cars up and down that property, Lee. Well, I can I can see that being a uh -oh. pretty a pretty deep motivation for uh Well, we've been doing this for a long time, you know, and we're not giving up. All right. So, uh Lee, before we let him go, I just yeah. want some inspiration from from the shirt. I think we'll get three different answers. Uh, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> best best Zeppelin album of all time. I got my opinion. I'm sure you got yours, but I'll let you go, Gary. Well, let, well I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will agree, but I'm thinking Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is better. Is that an album? So, yeah. Yes, sir. I don't um, remember that. I one. love I I love them all. Um, they were in uh, they were right in my bailiwick and wheelhouse when I was uh, when I was growing up. Uh, I would say four. Four. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I am ai love Houses of the Holy. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah, a good one, Kevin. Favorite. I like two and four, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Gary, thanks. Gentlemen, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. And again, to your viewers, it's just this easy to get on. It thank took me literally three seconds. Thank you. Thank you for uh, helping us uh, send our own message. Appreciate that. Have a wonderful day, gentlemen. You too, man. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. You're Bye -bye. welcome. I, I, you know, um, it reminds me of a, a Facebook post that I saw a little while ago. It's, it's no wonder that uh, young people today are so angry. They have crappy music. <laughs> That's what it is? <laughs> yeah, apparently. That's uh, what's fueling it. teenage angst? Oh, yeah. It's terrible music? It. They, they just have crappy music. I remember coming home one time. Uh, we were living in Curtis, uh, the other side of uh, Oshawa. And uh, my son was, uh, well, both my sons were going to a new school. We came in, and they're all sitting around the table in the, in the kitchen. And there's, and there's classic rock music coming out of our stereo, which was great as far as I was concerned. And uh, <laughs> my, my son, I think he was, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. And he said, uh, my friend wants to uh, trade you his uh, Led Zeppelin album for your Steppenwolf Greatest Hits. For a couple of weeks, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, what? I think I'm impartial. I think Houses of the Holy was the first Zeppelin album I ever owned. Well, that'll do it. So I think, and uh, yeah. Over the Hills and Far Away, probably my favorite song of all time. Oh, you know, when you think of their uh, their songs, uh, bands like that that are so here's that word that I think is so overused, but in this case, iconic. Their songs all run. Together, you tend you tend to think of their uh, their their portfolio of songs as as one long album and, and one long career because they were only together for three or four years uh, as far as cranking out those albums is concerned and uh, you tend to think of them all as one album which they're they're definitely not but uh, yeah you know uh, Robert Plant uh, and Jimmy Page are getting a lot of to this day. A, a lot of social media presence. Um, it's uh, like Robert Plant did a a duet. Oh, who's the lady that he sang with? Country oh, singer. Oh gosh, Natalie McMaster. No. Oh. Anyway, it's fabulous. He can still sing. Totally different kind of singer than he was with Zeppelin, but he can still still sing. Anyway, to go to Gary's point, yeah, it's easy to come on and. Uh, if you're concerned about balance and fairness and transparency and all those all those things um, that uh, the so-called MSM that's the cool that's what the cool kids call mainstream media these days if you're concerned about that stuff let me try to put those concerns to rest and there are people out there I know that will never believe me 
uh, the, I'm, I'm either a raging liberal or a staunch conservative, <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever, uh, pick a label. Um, neither one of those things is, is true. I've been around too long to be a party flag bearer because I, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't trust party politics at all. I trust the people individually or I don't trust them. So there it is. Who have a we got? Alison Krauss. Alison Krauss. Wait just a second. Can't play too much or the copyright police will come down. Oh yeah, they'll shut us down. Yeah. And rightly but, so. Uh, but that's some that's some cool stuff. I, I'm always jealous of him because he still has nice hair. But you know, what are you going to do? Today on the show, Lee, uh, after Natalie Bebo, which is coming up at 120, we're going to feature yeah. a new music video that uh, from an, a local artist we featured before, uh, Joe Lapois. I think. I think I'm saying it oh, right. Oh, is Joe coming back? Yeah, Joe's I saw that back. he had a new song out. Yeah, he had a new video out, so you know what? Let's play it. Are we going to do that? Yeah, we'll do cool. that. At, Joe we'll Lavois that, is coming we'll up. at the end of the show. At the end of the show. And, and again, uh, unfortunately, we won't have a lot of time with Natalie because of her very, very full schedule today in the media with, a, with her show co a film coming out tomorrow. But uh, right after Natalie, we'll, uh, we'll get to Joe Lavois. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Jack. Uh, on the right-hand side of uh, your screen, co-founder of uh, WeStream and executive producer of Ye Olde Programming, Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. And uh, Kevin, uh, again, this past week, you were, uh, you were uh, involved in and, and a flag bearer for the snow, snow day debates. Uh, <laughs> and it looks like we may we may have an opportunity for you to climb back up on your snow, uh, your soapbox. I almost said snowbox. Climb back up on your soapbox tonight because of the weather forecast. Yeah, I mean, this, we is just, this is just posted this morning from Nick. This is supposed to be tonight, guys and gals. 10 to 15 centimeters starting tonight and on into tomorrow. And uh, you know that there's going to be a post to say, listen at 6 a.m. to see if the buses are rolling and uh, the whatever are happening and the schools are open or closed and whatever. And when you have a, a, a thing like this come across uh, Environ Canada as a weather advisory for Niagara, you can almost uh, bet your bippy, as we used to say back in the day, that there's going to be a snow day tomorrow, but you won't know until 6 a.m. Kevin's always been waving the flag for, can't you just call it tonight? and take all the guesswork out of it. it. It benefits nobody calling it tomorrow. And the only side of the argument is, Lee, is what if we call it tonight and we're wrong? Yeah. And the realities so are, you're never really wrong. And now we're so quick to call snow days. I mean, everybody has a story, Lee, me, you, about, ah, oh, man, in our day there had to be 20 inches of yeah, snow. Yeah, we walked we, five miles to school. Walk. And uphill that, both ways. That's not the reality anymore. You know, if, even if there's a couple <laughs> centimeters of snow during the morning commute, it's a snow day. So here we are looking 10 to 15 centimeters, and I'll tell you that all of those fears have been completely unfounded. Yeah. So far this winter, I think there's been six or seven snow days. Every single one of them could have been called the night before. Yeah, and, for sure. and the defense is, well, what if we wake up and it doesn't happen? Well, they're calling 10 to 15 centimeters. Yeah. So somewhere in the region is going to get three, four centimeters of snow overnight, and that's and, enough for you to call a snow day. So and I was tell us tonight. I was thinking about this the other day when I was out walking my dog, and it, it, it was a snow day. And I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, school buses can't, can't drive through this? Really? <sighs> Sorry. I, uh, now, Lee, I get it. And I, I think... I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm old no, it's school. Not, I get but, it, yeah. But we're more cognizant of everybody's situation. Everybody's it's, safety and all it's that. More, it's more than just the buses. Yeah. Right? It has to do with the kids' abilities even to get to the bus stop. And for example, I don't know. No, yeah, it does. It does. I don't buy it. It does. I don't buy it. What if? And we used to do it, right? When it was a snow I day. I walked a quarter of a mile to a bus stop, man, through snow all the time. Uphill both but, ways. Uphill both ways. Yeah. No, I, I don't buy that. No, but the reality is, if you're forcing kids just to get to their bus stop, they have to walk. So they on take the, the day off. They have to walk on the street. So the parents make it a snow day. What's the difference? Doesn't happen that way anymore, Lee. But I'm just saying. I agree, but you're that's a parent. We can't get out of our driveway because of whatever. We'll keep them home. You make the call. It's not the world we live in. Because parents are still—I mean, parents are still. They're not going to come and arrest you. No, but parents are still obligated to go to work, and a lot of them leave their kids. Okay, I'm going to work at eight. They leave at eight fifteen to get to the bus. Well, if the only route to get to the bus stop means they have to walk on the road because the sidewalk hasn't been plowed because there's snow. Oh my God, my head's starting to hurt. Come on. I know, but you could see where the school boards would be a little hesitant. To say, yeah, school's on. If, if all of a sudden kids okay, have to stand so on the now, road. Okay, so now we got schools open and bus stops are closed. 
Now what have you gained? That happens a lot. Of course it does. So, just tell me the night before. I'll tell you right now, Lee. Snow day tomorrow. 10 to 15 centimeters. I, I'll tell I, you right I, now. I believe you. Even if there's only 5 centimeters, it'll be a snow day. Right, and they're calling for 10 to 15. Yeah. So even if they're wrong, we'll get 5. The, 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 the people that are the people that make the decisions for the people have probably already made the decision even as we speak. They just haven't... They just won't... Don't tell it, us it, tomorrow. It, it just doesn't fit in with the process. It just benefits no one. The only, pe- the only people it benefits is potentially all of us if the snow event doesn't happen. We live in a wimpish but society. And we're, wimpish. Also, we're also so much better at forecasting these days. We're wimpish. All right, let's get to some 411 stuff because uh, <laughs> the, cops, the cops pulled this Oh, off of I the love this, this story. Week. I love this story. No, this is a story that came. This is the traffic stop story, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. And that gun is banned in Canada. The gun yeah. you're looking at right there, banned. Kevin was asking me uh, last week what racking meant. You see that thing on the right side of the gun? That's, that's, the, that's the thing that goes on the top part of the gun that uh, loads the chamber uh, of the gun. It, it, it ejects one shell and puts another one in the, in the chamber, uh, etc. So when you do this, like a 9mm or whatever, uh, it, that's called racking. So this is a gun. Uh, this is the gun. So the story, the story being that there was a routine I love this so many so many crimes are solved and and so many charges are laid because of just routine the traffic stops on Saturday the 19th uniform officers on general patrol just doing what they do uh, in the area of Manchester Avenue and Hampstead place in the city of St. Catharines 418 in the afternoon in the afternoon Officers attempt to conduct a traffic spot, uh, stop on a multicolored infinity sedan. However, the vehicle did not stop. Oops, there's a, there's a sign right there. The infinity eventually pulled into a parking space in the area of Manchester Avenue on Whitmore Street. Female passenger exited the vehicle and fled the scene. So you got, you got the car. The cops are following the car. The, the car stops. <laughs> Chick takes off. Officers approach the vehicle, located a, a male in the driver's seat, as well as a, a wrapped bunch of Canadian money, as well as a bulletproof vest in plain view. Well, isn't this interesting for the officers on this scene? As a result, the driver was arrested. No surprise there. Kevin, give us a little scroll down there, if you would, my friend. Calvin Matthew. Uh, Jay Acostic, 25 years of age, of Simcoe, was arrested, charged with the following offenses of possession of a restricted firearm, which we showed you, restricted firearm possession, uh, knowing uh, possession unauthorized, possession restricted. These are all very technical things that sound stupid when you read them. Uh, Careless storage of a firearm. Okay, so. Here's here's where you get to the weird part of the story. Yeah, so this is going on. Uh, Car stops. Cops come up. Uh, I'll show you where we're talking here. Woman, Lee. yeah, woman so, runs away from the car. This is Ontario Street on the left. You see the Burger King labeled there. So yeah, yeah. just above Carlton, and this right here would be that intersection of Manchester and Whitmore. Not all that far from the highway. They could have made a clean getaway. <laughs> anyway, it's, yeah, right in behind that Burger King. Yeah. So, but while the police are on scene and uh, collecting this contraband firearm and money and stuff, the woman comes back to the vehicle. Okay, I guess maybe she realized she had no idea where she was going and had no choice. But as a result of that, Victoria Ann Harvey, 27 years old of St. Catharines, was arrested and charged with those offenses. A restricted firearm, unauthorized possession, careless storage of firearm, etc., etc., uh, they were held in custody pending a bail hearing. So here's, a, a, no, it never really said what the routine traffic stop was for, did it? Could have been like a busted taillight as they used to use that excuse all the time. Uh, my taillight's not busted. Psh, now it is. You know, <laughs> one of those. But I always thought like, you know, and, and this is a case where you got a, uh, an illegal handgun, but you know, you see those guys that are carrying a million dollars of contraband and they yeah. sneak it across the border but they're driving around with a busted tail yeah you're like take, some of, that, is that? take some of that million bucks or a dirty license plate yeah fix your car up i want to have a police officer on one time that really can tell people about license plates because you know those license plate covers 
that you buy, like the gray ones and the blue ones and stuff that you, those are illegal. They really are. I've heard, yeah. They are. Okay. Well, let's get back to this story because yes, okay. this girl, Victoria Ann Harvey, from the story is not an unfamiliar name to police or a lot of people in the region. Apparently, apparently not. Um, and I'm, I, I don't remember her back story, but there were a lot of comments that came as a, as a result of this, correct? Yeah, and I mean, I can, I can fill in some of the details, Lee, and all of it's documented. It's gone through yeah. the courts. But about three, four years ago, um, she, you know, in front of a judge said that she was an escort at the time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. She yeah. had a driver, uh, the guy named Alex, and Alex was found dead in the Niagara River. Right. And this sordid tale involves uh, a setup by maybe her boyfriend at the time who asked her to go get Alex. They drove him to a flatlands in and around Fort Erie where yeah. they torched his car. And the two, like the two men that were ultimately charged with his crime had him bound in duct tape and pushed him off a rail bridge into the river. This is the stuff of fiction novels. It's, it's and, crazy. And, and, and it happens in our backyard, and we don't even know it. I heard a, a police officer say something one time, uh, and, and I thought that was really an insightful... He was a detective, and, and I, uh, I, I thought I... Uh, it was really insightful in his part. He said, I don't, I don't often talk about um, what we do every day uh, when I come home. I don't, bring, I don't bring my work home. If my wife asks me, how was your day? I usually just say, eh, it's fine. Uh, because he said, I, I think of us, meaning his world as, a, as like a homicide detective or people that, people that deal with uh, the lower echelon of our society. He said, I think of us as the umbrella between what we see and what the public sees because what we see isn't very nice and and i thought that was a really really good solid way to look at uh at what some people do that put themselves like firefighters and police officers and people that see things every day that most of us really do not want to see uh and and uh and those kinds of crimes fall into that category speaking of crimes there was an update, and this, this happened not just this week, but we haven't had a chance to touch uh, on this um, before, and we were talking about this earlier, is you know, remember the, the two young ladies that were murdered at that, ho that home on the Niagara Parkway in Fort Erie? It was, on a, New Year it was a New Year's Eve party, correct, Kevin? Uh, and they found one person and charged him with a couple of counts of second degree murder. Uh, and they were looking for a second person. If I'm not mistaken, I believe they did find the second person, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Where I was going with this is the fact that they have gathered enough information uh, and enough of a picture, and I'm assuming enough evidence, to have now charged this primary suspect with two counts of first degree murder and obviously that infers in, in, in our amateur world uh, if you will as premeditated so this is something that didn't happen by accident it wasn't a manslaughter or thing or a spur of the moment or whatever this was uh, and there it is uh, detectives upgraded charges against 30 year old Treble Barnett Trevor Barnett out of Scarborough in connection to the murders two counts of first degree was in court on Friday, February the 18th, in relation to the upgraded charges. And uh, of course, the cops want to thank everybody for their assistance, uh, because in these in these situations, it really does take a, it really does take a village to come together to try to piece these uh, the these puzzles so that they make some sort of some sort of logical sense. So. Yeah. Two counts of first-degree murder. Two young ladies. Now, I want to um, make sure that, uh, that their names are part of this. The 20-year-old yep. Juliana Panunzio and 18-year-old Christine Crooks. And yeah. those are the two deceased. And again, the 30-year-old there from Scarborough now charged with uh, two counts of first-degree murder. Yeah. Which is um, brutal. 
Uh, where do you want to go here, Lee? Well, I, I did want to mention the the grandparents scam. Yeah, that's going around. Once again, it, it, it's been going around, but it's not apparently stopping. And this was something that came up on Niagara 411 this week as well as in other places. And once again, uh, Nick at Niagara 411, always a pleasure to partner with you. and. Uh, uh, and share content and uh, perspectives on uh, on the story. Hi to Nick's mom. Pleasure to have you here as always. Um, this is the this is the scam that uh, when we talked about this last time, there was a woman here in in Niagara, who was she's elderly, seventy six years old, I think she was. Um, now seventy six doesn't necessarily have to be elderly uh, but you're older anyway you're and, and she was looking after her husband at home he was ill she gets a telephone call from uh, a person that says it's her grandson and he's been arrested and uh, he needs twelve thousand dollars in order to be able to get out on bail and come home uh, she only has eleven thousand dollars in the bank uh, like to her name and they say, well, that'll, that'll be fine. A detective such and such is going to come and pick it up at the house. So this guy shows up and without incident, uh, knocks on the door. She hands him $11,000 and goes away. And her grandson was never in any, any harm's way whatsoever. And, and so many people have been taken advantage of in this way. And the, the police put out another release this week. Uh, or over the past week since we talked about this before, the fact that this scam is not going away. And we really need to educate people that may not be as aware of what's happening in the world outside their door as we are to the fact that y you, you just can't, you just can't believe any of this stuff that, that happens. So if you have somebody like that in your family uh, of of maybe advanced years or, or perhaps diminished uh, capacity uh, in some way, try to educate them. Just, just really, really stay on top of this stuff because these, uh, these people are losing life savings. You know, it's, it's so sad. Uh, Lee, want to share a, a happy story as Nick did this week. And this one came from um, the good folks at the, at the Welland General Hospital. If anyone here works in uh, ER at Welland Hospital, please say thank you to everyone who was on tonight. My youngest split his head and needed staples. The nurses and doc were fabulous. I know you guys catch so much negative... Uh, Flack. Flack, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to screw up that word. No. <laughs> you deserve to be told when you do it right. Uh, send us some good vibes five to seven days from now when we have them removed again. Thank you so much. And that would be about like today, tomorrow, probably, on yeah. the timeline. And there's our little guy right there. There he is. Yeah, I saw his picture. Aww, what a cutie. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, traumatic for a kid. Like I remember splitting my head open when I was a youngster, and it, it's not a lot of fun. Look at that cutie with his Olaf shirt. Of course, we didn't get staples back then. We had the, we had the needle and thread. Right, the, the, like the stitches yeah. that went through. Hi, buddy. How you yeah. doing? Hey, I got a popsicle. That's all I care about. And you know what, Lee? You know what's great to see is in the comments here, yeah. everybody had nothing but positive things to say. And we were talking about before about the, the negatives of... Of social media, of yeah. Social media. And uh, here, I'll throw, I'll throw them up here. Good. There. Oops, sorry, I might be... Oh, here we go. Yeah, always had good experiences in the ER. Great doctors and nurses, brave little guy, sending hugs and more hugs. He's such a cutie. Poor little guy. I hope he's feeling well. Yeah, that's nice. Nah, maybe it was comments. You know what? Those might just be comments on that picture. Yeah. Or comments on the entire post. There we go. Okay. That poor little guy. And everybody just saying great things about the care that they've received at, at Welland General Hospital. Yeah. So kudos to them. And we love sharing uh, good stories. And uh, I know this was on your list, Lee. You want to talk about this guy? This is something that uh, it, it's, the, it's the great untalked about until it happens. And that damage was done to the windshield of that car because of the vehicle he was following had a sheet of ice that slid off the, the, the vehicle and smashed into that windshield. 
And it's a good thing that windshields are made out of the kind of tempered glass that they are, that they, they, they shatter and splinter like that as opposed to break into chunks because that would have uh, probably caused the demise of the driver. So it's a good thing that windshields are made the way they are. But even that, Kevin, could have caused some serious accidents on the Queen E. Like how you react to that, kudos to the driver for being able to control the car to be able to get out of harm's way after that without causing any more damage. But this happens uh, all the time, so it's another reminder to not just scrape that little hole in your windshield so that you can see. Uh, you got to clean the car off and clean the, clean the top of the car off and, and, and make sure that this stuff isn't going to fly off because we've all had, I've had that happen, I, I, I've done that myself before and I thought, well, it, the car's okay, but then the car heats up inside, tent, the sun is on, and then sometimes they do just come off in sheets like that. So, Leah, just pulling up the comments here, I mean, 299 comments, I was amazed. 299? I was amazed how many people on here saying, this happened to me. And the power of not. the power of Niagara 411, even a couple of people in here saying, I saw that happen this morning. As though I, I saw that exact accident happen. Yeah. And you hear from truck drivers in the comments oh, as yeah. well saying that there's really no mechanism for us to clear the top of our trucks. Yeah, I was uh, I was talking to you uh, about this earlier in the week. There's a friend of mine, uh, and not Mr. Benison, that's been on the program before, because actually that's one thing I'll talk to him about at some point. But um, uh, another really close friend of mine was a life lifetime truck driver, and he said when he was driving some of the big rigs, it, would have, it was, of course, their responsibility to ensure that that truck is safe to drive before they take it off off the lot. And one of those things is in weather like this to ensure the fact that you don't have layers of snow and ice on the top of the trailer that are going to come off and cause problems. And he said it was up to the driver to to clean that off and they didn't provide, uh, at least the company that he was, maybe there are companies now that do this, they didn't provide the apparatus uh, or, the, or, or the proper tools to remove that stuff easily so it, it took them an awful lot of time to try to get that off there and some of the drivers maybe not were, uh, as conscientious as others so you would end up with these massive chunks and and, uh, and sheets of of accumulated ice coming off the coming off the trucks and his contention was why don't why don't trucking companies use the same sort of uh, apparatus that airports do when they're de-icing airplanes because it's it's airplanes are a little bit bigger and a, a lot higher but it's still the same kind of thing you've got uh, co2 or whatever it is that melts the ice so that it can uh, that it can come off and and we should do that because uh, uh judging by what kevin said 299 yeah and, and i scoured the comments as we always do preparing for the show because we love talking to people the real people of niagara and a lot of times yeah. they they unearth and show themselves in the comments and to that point, I ended up talking to a lady who mentioned in the comments that this is why my husband is a paraplegic. Right. My thoughts my thoughts were, oh, here's somebody who was driving a car behind. And got into an accident. It wasn't. And, and in talking to her, she said that, no, her husband was a truck driver, and he was up at the top of his truck trying to clean it off. And he ended up breaking through the roof. I think it was more of a tarp. One of those anything. canvas style roofs. So he was trying to clean off the top of his truck, fell through and landed the exact wrong way and has been a paraplegic ever since. So you look at the wow. other side of it and say, why don't truck drivers just get up there? Well, it's dangerous. It is. If they're not, if they're not being supplied with the proper tools, you want them just to get up there. And here's a guy who was trying to do just, just doing, that. Just doing his job, life changing in, in yeah. like 20 seconds. Boom. And then the, uh, the other thing yeah. that was pointed out in the comments, Lee, and I think it's, it's worth noting, just the lighter side of things, <laughs> is this is the photo that we yeah, see. Yeah, you said, you said the photo. So uh, I think the driver's I in there. I sent the photo through, but I didn't take time to really look at it closely. He's in there smiling or something. Look uh, at that grin. Do you see that grin on no, him? No, I don't. You can't see his, his pearly whites there, those teeth, flashing a grin? I oh, gosh. I got to gotta tell you, I don't. He's got the biggest ear-to-ear -ear grin well, he's a better man than I, because I wouldn't be grinning. Now, I'm assuming, you know, this is off to the side, all's well, OPP have responded. 
And, well, uh, uh, well, yeah, by now, he's, he knows he's fine. You know, and the old you buy know. a lotto ticket on the way home. Well, yeah. So, I mean, maybe he's just happy, probably just happy to be alive. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, I, I don't know, a, a lot of comments in there as well. He's saying, um, you know, leave distance between yourselves and other cars. That's part of it. One thing I would say, and I don't know if you do this, Lee, but I do this, especially when I see situations like that or somebody with a trailer, when they're first getting onto the highway. Oh, yeah. I want nothing to do with it because that's when stuff's going to fly. Yeah. Right? Because now they're getting up to speed for the very first time, and if there's anything that's not tied down properly, if there's any ice on the roof, no, that's I, what it's going to fly off. So I, give, um, I, get, I get real nervous, and I leave all kinds of space. Sometimes I'll too. speed up almost dangerously to get by them. Oh, yeah, me too. I don't want to be all behind the time. you. Yeah, just get as far away from them. because And, and not, because, not because you're afraid of the fact that these people... Are, are bad drivers. It's just the fact that it's a lot of weight. It's a lot of tonnage to control when you're operating one of those things. And frankly, I want to be as far away from them uh, as possible as often as as, as possible. Because I, I, you know, and because I don't want to be one of the people that causes anything either. So, and 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 again, I see this all the time about. Uh, about people driving too close. I mean, we know we we all probably do it, especially on major highways like the 400 series highways. Um, I want to want to talk about our sponsors uh, again. A very uh, exciting thing happened this past week for Gales Gas Bars, and uh, you see right there the the rainbow insignia on uh, on the right hand side. And Kevin, um, can, I, can, I want to make sure that I don't mess up the appropriate designation uh, of what this is. So um, I want to I want to make sure that I read the proper post here. We have news and are bursting at the seams to share it with you. We're so excited to announce that we are a newly rainbow registered business with Canada's LGBT and I plus Chamber of Commerce. Now, what does that mean? Uh, Rainbow Registered is a national accreditation for LGBT plus friendly businesses and organizations. When you see a Rainbow Registered symbol, you know the business or organization meets a stringent set of standards to ensure LGBT plus customers feel safe, welcomed, and accepted. The accreditation program grants a time-limited recognition to businesses and organizations for demonstrating compliance with the quality standard. Accredited businesses are deemed market ready for the LGBT plus customer and given the right to be associated with the program, prestigious rainbow registered designation mark. So congratulations to uh, Gail's guest once again for being trailblazers for business here in Niagara. Um, uh, one of the things we've talked about before when it comes to Gail's gas bars is the fact that uh, they are the only petroleum company petroleum-based company in Ontario that are a living wage, a fair living wage designated company, which I find amazing um, that it, they're the only one in their sector, in their, in their business in the province that has such a designation as a living wage. I just broke my pen. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, congratulations once again, uh, and it makes us all the more proud here at Niagara 411 Live that a company that has as much of Niagara at heart as Gales uh, does support this company as its primary sponsor. So we do appreciate that. So, and congrats again, Jessica and uh, the gang at Gales. Oh, by the way, uh, she may be watching the program right now, I don't know, but uh, I wanna send out a very, very uh, happy birthday to friend Vera Gale. Jessica's mom is uh, celebrating a birthday today. So, uh, happy birthday, Vera. See you soon. Um, congrats. Okay, so there we go. Performance, heating and air. Carlo uh, and his gang. Probably been a very, very busy season uh, for you guys. Uh, we know we, you drove by us here last week. Haven't seen, your, haven't seen your trucks this week, so I guess everybody on St. Paul Street's doing okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, also, thank you for supporting this show week after week. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. 
uh, Mark Shirk, Blake Shirk, uh, Verge Insurance Group. Yet another uh, made in, made for Niagara business and all your insurance needs. Any questions that you have about insurances and stuff? Because it can be a complicated uh, conversation. Sometimes Verge folks can uh, figure it out for you. So give them a call if you need them. All right, uh, and Kevin, of course, of uh, we stream. What do you? What have you been up to uh, uh, lately? When you're not trying to make me look better than I deserve? Yeah, we've had a very busy week actually. Yesterday it was so nice. Sorry, yesterday going back to Tuesday. So nice to be at an in-person event. Mm. Uh, we were providing some AV support and also providing the hybrid element for the um, what ended up being the the unveiling of a new branding initiative for the town of Lincoln. Oh, okay. And it's the Niagara Benchlands. And they had the Niagara Benchlands Tourism Summit. And yeah. it brought together uh, people working in the tourism sector from all over Ontario out at In on the 20. So we were there okay. all day Tuesday at In on the 20. Uh, met a lot of people. It was really cool to see the town of Lincoln come together and brand all of their smaller partners with the Niagara Benchlands. I think they so, just hit the nail right on the head with that one. D d define Benchlands now from... Where I spent a lot of time in British Columbia, they called the benches as you went up uh, through the mountain areas. Is this uh, part of the whole escarpment situation? How do they define uh, bench lands? Do you, can you clarify that to it's, me? It's more of a marketing initiative. Oh, okay. And again, I'm not... Like it's I'm, an area. I'm not an official spokesperson, but right. you know, every five, ten years, it's important to rebrand yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's time I to rebrand. I know, re but you're the only guy I got, so Right, I the town of Lincoln, you know, it includes <laughs> Beamsville and Jordan yeah. and Vineland Station um, and a bunch of other smaller communities. So how do we brand all of this so it's okay. something that's palatable? Sort of like the 20 Valley kind of group exactly so kind of working in conjunction with the 20 valley everybody refers to that area at least in the wine world yeah. as the bench right so because it goes it, it goes in benches up the escarpment and a lot of people know okay. that hey you know what if you're coming from toronto down to niagara do yourself a favor you know and and head into the bench there and discover some of the wineries on your way because so many people just drive by on the qew and herd themselves into niagara on the lake and the bench has so much to offer, and it's more than just wine. It's it's cuisine, it's landscape, yeah. it's geography. Um, so we were there for the unveiling, and you're going to start to see a lot of that language and a lot of that imagery throughout Niagara as That's they great. continue to promote themselves as a destination. So what big thanks to uh, Brittany Bezluski with the town of Lincoln. Oh, uh, look for at you with the name dropping. We stream on board, so thank you very much for that. And then tonight, Lee, we'll be up at um, the Grantham Lions Club up on Niagara Street, like Niagara and Parnell. Oh, okay. And the Port Weller Residents Association are having um, an open forum and information night looking at the City of St. Catharines policy when it comes to marijuana grow ops. Oh, okay. that's last, a big topic. Last week or the week before, council received a report from staff yeah. as to the direction they were going to go. And I think they're going to delve into that a little bit and dissect right. it and hear from a lot of different residents in their voice as it pertains to that. So if you want to see that, that will be live on YouTube and on Facebook, but the Port Weller Residents Association. Awesome. Go and check them out. You'll see them there tonight. So, yeah. And then we got this show. We were doing a couple of councils on Tuesday night. Wow. Very, very busy. But, of course, if you need a hybrid event, if you need some AV support, if you need some tech support. What do you mean by studio, a hybrid event? A hybrid event was exactly what we did at In on the 20. So there are people there in person. Okay. And there are also people there via Zoom. Yep. or coming in remotely. The important thing is when you hire WeStream for your hybrid event is the two are integrated. And the idea is to try and give everybody the same experience. So the person that's on Zoom mm -hmm. is getting a full multi-camera production from us. So they feel okay. and see like they're seeing the same thing that the people are in the room. And they also have every opportunity to come on a big screen in the room, interact with the people that are in the room and ask um, you know, some of the policy makers and some of the speakers mm -hmm. direct questions and get direct answers for okay. them. So that's the hybrid event, and we can do that for your company or business. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Thank you for that, Lee. Nice, nice, to see that, uh, nice to see that the activity is, is ramping up, as they say. Hopefully it continues to ramp up as opposed to down. Uh, we 
feel uh, from what we hear that uh, our restrictions are either whole COVID thing. Do we still have COVID? Uh, do we do anything with it? Mm, do we so. still have COVID around? Is it still happening? Uh, yeah, depends. Yeah. I don't know, sorry, I'm being facetious. No, the, you know what? <laughs> the, the, the thing being, oh, there it is, Niagara Bench Lands Lincoln. So uh, all you've got to do is, uh, is Google that and you'll find out more. But it, it, it's great to see those area, areas brand themselves. Like I, uh, um, I, I thought it was great. Jordan really did this, this sort of great uh, commerce branding thing centered around the town. But the, I mean, a lot of it, we are so diverse and we are so spread out in in Niagara that it's it's really cool when a group gets together and say, "Hey, we've got something here," and, and if you want to be a part, it's hard to be a part of everything. You can't, well, we're in Niagara, we're a part of Niagara. Well, you can't be a part of everything. So if you, if you take all these uh, little pieces, parts, as they used to say, and you, and you make it into a, a thing, uh, an image, and as Kevin said, use that word branding, it just, uh, it just helps so much. Um, and, uh, and again, I use the uh, example of the 20 Valley. Uh, area because there are just so many things that are included in that and 20 Valley uh, was always a place it was a golf course and it was a few other things but now it means so much more as a marketing destination with all of the people that fall into that and this is uh, another example of that so c congratulations to everybody that's uh, part of the Niagara Benchlands uh, I love the logo because that's what it is you see those those elevations um, because bench farming always used to be plateaus like that uh, for example, uh, the winery that I spent a lot of time with over the last few years was uh, Culinary Estate Winery over on Concession 6 in uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake. Now, it looks fairly flat, but when you look at different elevations, it is part of an Appalachian. An Appalachian is a grape-growing um, area, and there are many in Niagara. It's not just a one grape growing area. There are many Appalachians, if you will, and uh, the one out at, uh, out at Culinary there in Concession 6 is actually the St. David's Bench. So, uh, depending on elevations here in Niagara, there are, you're going to probably hear a lot more of that phrase uh, over the years, bench, because it's, uh, it's the levels uh, at which they grow their grapes. Interesting stuff. Thanks, Kevin. For that. Yeah, no, it, was a, uh, it was a very busy week, and again, yeah. you can uh, leave a comment. I mean, it's very easy. Wherever you're watching right now, if you leave a comment, want to get in touch with me, uh, absolutely, we read them and, uh, and what have you. So what do you think about those uh, four-day school weeks that uh, they were talking about? Ah, 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 ah. Sorry, I had, to, I had to light that. I had to light that fuse. Kevin's going to go off like a Roman candle any minute. Yeah, come on. Just one, <laughs> one touch point at a time, and today we're staring down potential 10 to 15 okay, centimeters okay. of snow overnight. And that's the one I'll be on today is just please tell us the snow day the night before. Tell us at 6, 7 o'clock. And that's it's pretty obvious to me uh, that, uh, that Doug Ford's going to get elected because now everybody's getting their sticker money back. Right? So that, uh, <laughs> you know, that I, I, don't, I don't make any criticisms uh, of politicians. I really don't because they're all pretty much tarred with the same brush in one way or another. Uh, trying to make points and trying to get elected and, uh, and the whole meal deal. Would any party have done better with the COVID thing? I don't know. It was uncharted territory, federally or provincially or whatever. Not going to get political and, uh, and that's the last thing I want to do. But the only thing I have to, I have to tell you, the only thing that really does bug me when we are just a few months away from an election are, and, and this goes for all the parties, uh, are, are the promises and the things that happen to, uh, to very obviously try to grab your votes. And, uh, and these, these things happen with every political party, irrespective of their stripe or color or whatever. And, and the, the, the license plate stickers, I'm going to get a refund. Hey, great. Um, uh, and and Because uh, I paid for my sticker a little while ago. I put the new sticker on. And uh, I don't know, I had to pay for two years, so it was like 240 bucks or whatever. So I'll get that back. That'll be great. Uh, but is it going to really influence my vote? I don't think so. Um, where where are we gonna? How are we gonna replace that money? Where is it like? Uh, I, don't what? I don't know. But you know what, Lee? I, I don't care really. It's okay. I love 
this from a political standpoint. Okay, why do you love it, Kevin? Because I, I'm so I'm so cynical. I don't care about it. But. Here's why I love it because it's the understanding from the provincial government, yeah. from I guess the Doug Ford clan. And by the way, I am not affiliated with any political party. I'm a rainbow. I it's have that voted knowing for, your grassroots audience, right? It's knowing that people don't really follow politics. And unfortunately, politicians <laughs> surround themselves with people that follow politics, but they represent like 2% of the population. Mm -hmm. So when they go in and say, yeah, you know what you need to do? You need to make a $400 million infrastructure announcement. Well, that doesn't... What does that mean? What does, what, that, mean what? To, what does that mean to me? Yeah. Right? Know what you need to do. You need to commit a billion dollars to health care. All right, what does that what does that really mean to me? I mean, okay, yeah. fine, I'll never see any of that money. Yeah. But last time around, you know, people criticized buck a beer. And I'm like, that's beautiful. Buck a beer. It's a great saying. It's a good and and, and, and it's not much more than wholesalers were paying for beer anyway. It's, I mean it's a whole the and whole buck a beer thing was a bit of a they went that away deal. But it doesn't matter, right? It appeals to the every person, it the people that don't indeed. follow politics. In this one here, I see a lot of criticism of people that obviously follow politics, saying, well, where are they going to get the money from? It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It you doesn't mentioned matter. Buck, you mentioned Buck and you mentioned beer in the same sentence in Canada. You, you're in. In this case, <laughs> this affects, I don't want to say everybody, but it affects everybody that drives. Oh, and God. every single Ontarian hates it. That right on their birthday, they get that piece of mail that says, by the way, on or and before your birthday, to, you got to walk down to Service Ontario, have, you had to and you got to pay up, hundreds of dollars. Had to line up at Service Ontario, clean, clean, clean yeah, the it's license. It's my birthday again. Clean the license plate off, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, thank um, you, thank you very much, Government of Ontario. So they looked at that and said, you know what, we're going to get rid of that. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They could, they could say we're getting rid of that and we're implementing this. But all, most of the people will hear sure. us. So okay, so on my birthday this year, I don't have to pay. Two hundred dollars. Awesome. That. I'm I'm for that. And it doesn't matter. Tomorrow you can make a million dollar infrastructure investment announcement. You could you could plant five million trees. That doesn't affect anybody. No. That's you just true. you just gave everybody back two hundred and fifty bucks no, on their birthday. Th hey hey, there's no there's there's no question uh, that that they knew what they're knew what they're doing. Uh, absolutely. So why don't the other parties pick up on this? At the same time, the other parties are going to go out and make a stupid infrastructure. They're going to give us a tax rebate. Do you know what a tax incentive is? Most people don't even do their taxes. <laughs> they don't know what a tax incentive is, but they yep. know that on their birthday, they don't have to fork out 250 bucks. Kev, should we go back and talk about snow days again? You okay? You're right. I said I was only going to be on one thing. Are you okay? I said I was going to be on one thing. You sure you're okay? Uh, yeah. Just you want a beer? Biding time for uh, <laughs> Natalie Bebo coming on. We're in a pub. You want a beer? You want to relax yeah, a little bit? Oh, gosh. I do. I do need to calm down a little bit. Yeah, here, you man. just got just take a... Take a breath, man. A little bit on fire. What are some of the other things we wanted to touch on here before we, uh, it's only, before we bring it's, Natalie on? Hey, it's only politics. Oh, here there were a couple updates on the um, the break and enter. At it's both. okay, folks. I'll get them. I'll, I'll I'll calm him down before he gets behind the wheel. It'll be all right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the uh, the robbery at the Penn Center in St. Catharines yeah. solved, and the robbery at the Lake House restaurant also solved. Right. So let's throw some of these up here. Okay. Niagara Regional Police News. Uh, NRPS investigating. <laughs> I'm sorry. Break and enter at the Penn Center. How do you break? I don't know. Anyway, as a result of the investigation, detectives were able to identify the suspect. Colin Lauzon, uh, Lauzon uh, whatever, 25 of St. Kitts arrested and charged with the following offenses. Break and enter with intent. Uh, theft under five grand. Held in custody pending a bail hearing. Anybody with information asked to contact the police. Okay, where did they, uh, how do you br actually break into the Penn Center? Where did they actually break into the Penn Center? So this guy broke in after hours and he literally just kicked the door down, like the windows. Which, which, like at the back, at the door, like just, just to, broke just into to, the actual yeah, mall. Yeah, if you remember, we covered the story, he broke into the mall and he stole the skateboard. Ah, okay. Like he kicked in through the window and stole a skateboard. All right. What a winner he is. Yeah. And I'm trying to pull up the, uh, yeah, here we go. The man uh, arrested for the break-in in Lincoln. Speaking of Lincoln, but, you know, another hot spot there is the, uh, the lake house. You see the one? Right. Now, Lake House Restaurant. That is a place, a uh, fabulous restaurant. It always amazes me because I don't think I've ever seen a restaurant with as big a uh, parking lot as this place has that is always as full 
as this is. I'm almost thinking that they pay people to park in their, <laughs> in their lot. It's just so busy all the time, but it's so popular. It's a great spot. So they revealed that an unknown male had smashed the glass of the front door to enter into the restaurant. Well, inside the restaurant, the suspect proceeded to steal items from the fridge and then damaged the cash register prior to leaving. Well, obviously damaged the cash register because he thought he was trying to get money out. Uh, and m most restaurants uh, and businesses that deal at all with cash registers take their float out of the cash register at the end of the day. I don't understand. Like, you, you, can, you have to, you can't fix stupid, really. Further investigation by Grimsby detectives led them to identify the truck the suspect was driving was stolen. Oh, well, that just gets better. Jeremy Boyer, Jeremy, my goodness, 32 years old in Niagara Falls, arrested and charged with the offense of blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kevin, I know there are desperate people out there. I know we have um, drug issues. I know we have mental health issues. I know we have poverty issues. I know we have social issues. But uh, there has to be, there has to be um, an alternative to, to stupid crimes. This is a, this is a restaurant. If you have, I can see, I can see myself if I were in desperate straits, trying to plan some kind of break-in or robbery or like maybe catalytic conversion. I don't know, but you know, trying to trying to figure out uh, by hook or by crook how to how to help my family, how to put food on the table. Well, I, I understand desperation. I, I I understand what it's like to not have enough. Money. My wife and I used to take pop bottles back so we could get milk for our kids. I remember what it was like to, to not have, as my dad used to say, two pennies to rub together. I get it. But there has to be some way to prevent stupid crimes. Can't, if you're going to be a criminal, can't you, ha can't you plan something? Like a restaurant that's not going to have, if they're not going to have any money on site. That's, that's likely why they've chosen a life of crime in the first place. Lee. What are you going to do, steal furniture? Without further ado, want to welcome uh, Wellen filmmaker Natalie Bebo. Thank right you. Hey, Natalie, welcome back to the program. <laughs> Hi. What a, what a lead in. Hey? <laughs> Pardon? I said, what a lead in. Talking well, about. Oh, sorry. But, stupid crime. <laughs> oh. Well, you, you must have run into a few in your filmmaking days. Um, oh, no, I see. So anyway, I don't want to waste our time. First of all, uh, congratulations on the nominations for the last Walrus uh, Canadian Screen Awards. Congratulations on that. Um, and you've got another big project that is debuting tomorrow in the CBC, Why We Dance. We put the trailer on earlier, just so you know, because I know you've been busy today. We, uh, we played it for our folks to give them a, give them a taste uh, of your show. Uh, tell us why this... Why this, why this film? Well, it came to me at a perfect time uh, in my life, both professionally and personally, after I had just finished the Walrus film and I was sort of cleansing my palate a bit. And, uh, and this um, film came in, which uh, struck to the heart of who I was growing up and who I still consider myself to be, which is um, a dancer. And so, to look at the evolutionary reasons why we dance, why dance is ubiquitous across time, across cultures, um, was a really great challenge for me because uh, I've always practiced it and I'm always, always, you know, consider myself to be in love with the arts of it, right. um, with the artistic expression, but I hadn't actually intellectually given it much thought as to why we do it. And um, did, did you create the, the story or did you work with, uh with other people in collaboration with this film? Yeah, no, I was approached by a producer to direct the film and, um, and then crafted the vision uh, with him to uh, say something a bit different about dance than had been said before. You know, the project came to me um, after it had been uh, sold to CBC. And then we sort of extended the vision a little bit broader to look at the philosophy and the greater evolutionary reasons why this seems to be such a big impulse for us to dance. And, uh, and I worked on it for about a year. Okay. And um, and interviewed all kinds of interesting people in the U.S., in the U.K., in Canada. 
uh, you, you, you answered you answered my next question, which is good. It took, so you, you worked on it for about a year, um, then then it goes into editing and and all those all those things. Now um, before too much time goes by, because you know we're limited. Uh, exactly when uh, I know you said it's CBC, but uh, what time, what bat channel, etc. Can we see you at this? Yep, tomorrow. Friday, February 25th at 9 o'clock Eastern on CBC, The Nature of Things. And that's the David Suzuki program, correct? That's right. Yeah, he actually narrates it. So The Last Walrus was the was a Nature of Things as well. I narrated it because it was my point of view, my you know, story of having followed that story. Um, and uh, But this is uh, old school, traditional David Suzuki narrating The Nature of Things uh, okay. about... Dance, yeah. We see some uh, scenes uh, in the trailer and some other things about dancers that are, um, they're electro, they have electrodes and uh, connections on them. Are they, are they dancing for like video games and, and other things? Why are they wired up like that? Well, it's funny you should say video game. So it is a for video game, but it uses a similar technology, uh, a biofeedback tool. Right. Uh, and that is a, a scene from an experiment at MIT, which I filmed around connecting the dancer to how our muscles are working inside the body. So being able to actually visualize outside your body on a screen what your muscles are doing when you're moving okay. as a way to better connect with how you're moving. And so this is just one little segment in the exploration of the reasons why dance is something we need to do. We're speaking with Natalie B. Bo, a uh, uh, well in filmmaker uh, extraordinaire, just to remind people who were speaking with here. Natalie, in the course of doing this, and I know that you said you had a background in dance and you f feel you are a dancer. So many families put their, uh, put their daughters into dance almost almost as a, as a rite of passage for, for little girls to go into dance and go through that thing. Was there anything through this that just really took you by surprise or that you learned that you didn't expect to learn while you were making this film? Absolutely. The mere thesis of the film actually was brand new to me because I'd always imagined it as this activity that we choose to do or choose not to do. You, Lee, might consider yourself a dancer and you might not consider yourself a dancer. But what this film taught me is that you actually are a dancer, whether you realize it or not. <clears throat> and that evolutionarily, we were doing a form of dance as we were becoming human. And so this idea that the creative patterns of movement that we employ when we dance at the base of it are movements that actually helped our brains grow large and our hearts empathic now, and it made no, so us human. It's fascinating so did you also experience or, or see the difference between what might be ritualistic dance of culture and dance for fun no, well, yes and no, because it really all forms of creative movement are dance, whether you're doing it to express yourself culturally or you're doing it for fun or you're doing it for exercise. But what we tried to do is actually strip away all of that, strip away this idea of skill as well. Are we a good dancer or a bad dancer? Am I afraid of dancing? Do I love dancing? And actually look at the heart of what the movement is and why is it that every single culture in the history of time has had a dance of its own? Why is that? Why is it omnipresent? And that's part of what we tried to explain in the film is, is that ultimately to dance is to be human. Fascinating. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we're kind of out of time and I appreciate you even squeezing us in this much. Yeah, I know, thank you. I know this day has been absolutely nuts for you, uh, but I, I hope that we touched on the kernels uh, of something that will inspire people to watch because all of all of your films are in incredibly well done. And, and Natalie Bebo, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow night, CBC, Why We Dance. Uh, and uh, as you said, it doesn't matter whether you're good or bad, we're all dancers. It, it reminds me of Elaine Bennis, like on, on, on Seinfeld. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's Everybody, right. Everybody's a dancer. You got it. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. And you know what? It's a really fun, whimsical film. So, you know, there are a lot of heavy things going on in the world right now. And I have to say it was a real privilege to, uh, to work on something this joyful. Well, we need it. We sure do. Uh, and again, thanks. Good luck with it. Uh, hope it uh, kicks the roof off the dump tomorrow night. 
and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon when you're not so damn busy. Thanks so much. Okay. Talk soon. <laughs> Bye. 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 What a great lady. What a what a fabulous. Um, I, I don't know, um, unpretentious, uh, talented Niagara uh, artist, Natalie Bubo. Yeah, I, I loved it. Well. I loved it just when I heard of it. Why we dance? I've never really asked that question before, but it's so obvious. We all do it. Why do we do this? Even in our minds, we dance. You know, like re, uh, you, you conjure up different movies. Like remember that uh, uh, that movie? It, t- it made Tom Cruise famous when he slides into the yeah risky business. Risky business in a, in his underwear dancing to Bob Seger. Like it was just, and we all do it. Uh, the old, even as old as the Jerry Lewis movies, when he was in a kitchen and he'd be banging pots and pans to the music in the background. It's all it's all a form of dance and expression. And you know what? When so cool. There is something magical when people do it right. And I'm I'm not oh, that person. And I'll admit my. I've spent too much time watching boring dance competition uh, shows on TV. Yeah. Um, but Dancing never, with the Stars. Who cares? Not the star. I'm more interested. The Dancing with the Stars never spent two seconds watching that thing. Okay. But we're, well, we're, what are you talking about then? Uh, so you think you could dance? Oh, okay. Where it's the people like that's where Twitch came from on on Ellen's show yeah. and what have you. And you know, every show there's probably one dance routine where I go, well, there was two hours of crap. But there was five minutes where they just got it right. And when they do... Five minutes of magic. When they do, it is it is something yeah. magical. But, I mean, you know, you think of it, you go to a wedding, and what does the night culminate with? A dance. Oh, of course. And that's what we do as humans. That's that's the big culmination well, it starts that the way dance. and it, it, it starts that way and it ends that way. And why do we do it? So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. And, Lee, I buried uh, an hour of my life last night watching a Nova documentary on prostheses. I've got to go back. Or prosthetics. Uh, prosthetics. Yeah, I guess prosthetics. Prostheses? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Prosthetics. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think I might have taped that one, so I'm going to go back and look at it. And uh, you can go back and look at this show anytime. Let me. Let, let's before we go, guys. I know we have Joe Lavoie coming up. Uh, that's going to uh, perform for us uh, the new video he put, he put out. But Kevin, um, for anybody that wants to look at an archived version of these shows, these are all available right from episode one of season one. Uh, and if, if there's something on there that somebody wants to go to that they were interviewed or they want to find it or, or their, uh, their, their, their relative says you should watch this, how do, how do people do that? Just go to the Niagara 411 Facebook page and across the top tabs you'll see videos. You may have to pull down the menu to get to videos, but if you go to videos and you'll see them all there. And of course, if you just searched for Niagara 411 Live on YouTube, They'll all come up there as well. But yeah, you're right. They're all ready for what they call VOD, Video On Demand. All right. Uh, Again, uh, to our Ukrainian community, we hope your families uh, and friends uh, over there are safe. Difficult, uh, difficult times. Kevin, as always, a pleasure working uh, with you here. And uh, Niagara's, uh, uh, Gail's Gas Bars fueling this program as well as Niagara. Performing heat, performance heating and air, Carlo, thank you. Verge Insurance, uh, the Shirks and uh, your gang, thank you very much. My name's Lee Sterry. We'll be back here to do it all over again. We'll be into March by then for episode nine. Uh, thanks for being here. It's always a pleasure. Don't forget, uh, you're as big a part of this show as we are. And uh, if you ever want to come prepared to be a part of it, you're more than welcome. Uh, have a great weekend. Joe Lavoie, coming up. Cheers. I'm a name to say I'm my first time caller I don't know much about love at all I heard this love line could kill the broken hearted So my fingers decided to call I'm a name to say I'm, I'm feeling all the emotions I try to get up, should I feel this pain? Haven't left my house in days Each man knows my name at all
Just hang up your phones to all your callers who are out there. Just hang up your phones. 